Hi guys, I'm here today to talk about VLAN concepts and configuration. And you can see I've got a little diagram here in front of me that we're gonna work through together. So the first thing to say up front is what is a VLAN? So a VLAN is a virtual local area network. And essentially VLANs allow a network administrator to divide up the network or to allow us to have network segmentation. So this could be for security purposes, this could be to isolate different traffic. So you can see in this example, I've got PCA and PCB. They're going to be in VLAN 10 in this student VLAN, so we're pretending this is a kind of a college scenario. And we've over on this side, we've got PCC, they're in the faculty VLAN or VLAN 20. And you'll also notice here that VLAN, although it's a layer two concept, it maps down or maps up, I should say, in the TCP IP suite to layer three. And you can see in this case, I'm assigning the, the network address 192.168.20. Whereas you notice here with, um, essentially with the 10 network, we have assigned this to the student. So that's the 192.168.10. That something is the student VLAN. So by the end of this, uh, if you like, little scenario, these two PCs should be able to ping each other fine, but they shouldn't be able to ping this PCC. PCC is essentially isolated on their own. Now again, in a real world environment, we might have more faculty members, but for this particular example, we're just gonna, we're gonna work through. We may add a PC at the end, let's see how we do for time. So what I'm gonna do is, the only configuration I should say that I've done so far on these switches is, I've done no configuration at all. The only things that I've done is I've popped an IP address and a subnet mask and a default gateway. And you can see if I hover over this PC, you'll notice that I've got the IP address 192.10.3 with a subnet mask or a solder notation of slash 24 with a default gateway of 192.10.1. Now you can see there's no default gateway in this diagram at the moment. There's no router. So, at the moment, we're purely looking at layer two. And we'll talk more about that and the difficulties doing inter-VLAN communication later. But for now, I'm gonna try and check to see the connectivity between these guys. Now, at the moment, if I just hover over this switch, we can see that there's very little configuration done. You'll notice that from fast ethernet 01 all the way down to gigabit ethernet 02, everyone, all of the ports are in VLAN 1. You'll also notice down at the very bottom, you'll see VLAN 1 there, and that's saying down, and that's also in VLAN 1. So one of the things that network administrators do is, Ethernet switches do not need to know anything about layer three, but in order to, if you like, access them remotely, for example, using Telnet or uh, much preferred SSH, we'd actually usually want to put an IP address on the switch. So what I'm going to do is, in order to, to allow that, we'll, we'll do that. But even before I do that, we don't need, in order for these two guys to communicate, and we'll see this, it's a similar configuration on switch two here, essentially all of the ports are on VLAN 1. So that means this port here, going from PCA to the switch, this is on VLAN 1. The port here going across, F FA01 is VLAN 1, and this is FA01 as well. They're all on VLAN 1, and this guy is on VLAN 1, and this guy is also on VLAN 1. Now, if we, for example, at the moment, you can see, guys, that I've actually pulled out this um, real-time and simulation mode. So again, sometimes if you don't want simulation to go through it step by step, you can actually click that button. Also, I'm using, just to, to note here, guys, I'm using Packet Tracer 7.3. So if you're using an earlier edition of Packet Tracer, you'll notice that when, um, when, when I've just collapsed this menu, you'll notice that in order to get this back out, I need to press this little button. Because in a moment, I'm gonna do a little test. So if I wanna do a ping test, I can just add simple PDU and send a message from here over to here. Now, at the moment, I won't see if that's gonna be successful or if that's gonna fail, essentially. I'll need to click out this little button to see the test. So at the moment, I wanna send from PCA over to PCB. And we can see that indeed this is successful. The reason why it's successful is they're on the same broadcast domain, they're on the same LAN subnet. Now, if I try to ping from PCA to PCC, this shouldn't be successful. And the reason why it shouldn't be successful is 
because I'm pinging it across different subnets from the 10 network over to the 20 network. And these are just layer two devices, okay? They're, they're in this case, they're um, 2960 switches. So just to prove that, I guess, we'll just do a quick test from A over to C. We can see that eventually this fails, which is, which is to be expected. Um, also, if we try and do a quick ping test between PCA and the switch, okay, it'll say the switch one has no functional ports. In other words, the switch is able to pass traffic across layers one and two, but it, it has a problem if we try to communicate over from layers one, two, and three to get a response. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump into the switch configuration and I'm gonna go into enable mode and I'm gonna go straight into configuration mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change, so we looked before at the interface, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say show IP interface brief. I'm just gonna show you that, oh, let's go back into our privilege mode. I shouldn't be running that configure that command in configuration mode. So I'm gonna go show IP interface brief. Okay, and I like to shorten the commands, but again, that's just show um, IP protocol interface brief. When I press enter to that, and I always like to just hover this out so that we can see everything. And if I keep pressing enter, I can go down a line at a time. So essentially, you'll notice down the bottom there is something I'm interested in. It says this virtual VLAN 1 interface, it is basically unassigned. Uh, essentially, it's okay, yes, but the status is administratively down and it's down. So it hasn't been configured yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to configure that. I'm going to go into interface VLAN 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an IP address on this. So again, in order to manage this device maybe down the road, we could, for now, we could put it on this one network. Now, again, sorry, not the one network, the 10 network. I want to put it on the same network as PC A and B, okay? Now again, for example, I'm just going to use, um, I'm going to pick an IP address. I don't want to pick the default gateway, even though we don't have the default gateway in this diagram. So I'm gonna maybe pick something that's not being used at the moment. And I'm just looking at the IP addresses here between A and B, and it looks as though five is free. So I'm gonna give the switch the IP address dot five there at the end, and I'm gonna give a standard class C slash 24 subnet mask. The last thing that I need to do actually before this comes up is I need to obviously say no shut or no shutdown. And this will bring up the interface VLAN one. So when I press enter, we, we notice there are status messages and indeed this line protocol VLAN one has changed its state to up, so that's a good sign. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go exit, exit again, I'm gonna run that show IP interface brief command again. This time, I should note that our VLAN 1 interface has come up. Now, if I, for example, do that quick test between PCA and the switch, I'm hoping that this, oh, it's failed. Now again, the, one of the reasons why it could have failed is it could have needed to arc first and basically get the response back. And by the time that response came back in, it could have failed. So I always like to try it twice. So let's double check. And we can see indeed now it's successful. So the likelihood it was there that we had an ARP. If we went into simulation mode, we'll check this maybe later, that we, could, we, we could have saw that, that it didn't get a response back and by the time it sent that ping, it, it had timed out. So that looks good at the moment. So we can, at the moment, we can ping between here, but they're all on VLAN one still. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to verify that we can see these all in VLAN 1. The command to do that is called show VLAN. And when I do this, I can see that all of the ports on the switch at the moment are in VLAN 1. So we can see that by default, a Cisco switch, all of the ports are put in this VLAN 1. And there's no sort of tag added to these VLAN 1 because this is known as, the, the by default, the native VLAN. Okay, now we'll talk maybe in another video about the native VLAN, but for now just think that these have, they're all put in by default into this VLAN one, and they're, they're, they're made, these are all put in what are called access ports, which means that they all correspond to one VLAN. So in this case, they're all in VLAN one. But what if I want, for example, this PCA to be in VLAN 10 and PCB to be in VLAN 10? I essentially want to move fast Ethernet 06 and Fast Ethernet 011 down that they correspond with a VLAN 
10. But at the moment, I've only got VLAN 1 and I've got these other VLANs, okay? And these are kind of older legacy technologies. So we don't need to worry about these. But we do need to create some new VLANs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some new VLANs on this port. So I'm going to go back into configuration mode and I'm going to go VLAN and I'm going to say VLAN 10. And that's going to create the VLAN. We're moving into this config VLAN mode. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to name this. So in this case, I'm going to name this the student VLAN. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back exit. I'm going to say VLAN. Um, we, can, we can set up another VLAN. I know at the moment that there's only VLAN 10 computers connected to this switch. But if you like, I can create another VLAN and then say, let's say faculty. So um, I better pop in name faculty there. So name faculty. So once I've done that, I can now exit. To see that change, I can say show VLAN. So now guys, what I've got is I've essentially created two new VLANs and you can see them here. The student VLAN on, on VLAN 10 and the faculty VLAN, but there's no ports assigned to these. So there hasn't been any changes with regards to traffic flow at the moment. These guys are still, if you like, this guy here, particularly he's still sitting in VLAN 1. So let's now change him so that essentially he's now going to be in VLAN 10. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to go under the interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 6. And what this is, I'm going, if you imagine, I'm going into this port and I'm going to do some configuration right here now. So what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say, okay, so no longer do I want that person or this PCA to be in VLAN 1, I want to change it over. So what I'm going to say is a command called switch port. And if I don't remember what this command looks like, I can use my help remember in the Cisco iOS, this internet working operating system to help me. So in this case, I can see if I'm not sure on the command, I can see the top one there, it's saying access, set access mode characteristics of the interface. And that sounds promising. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go switch board access. And then maybe if I'm not sure on this, I can hit the question mark again. It's saying, oh, what VLAN, set the VLAN that when interface is in access mode. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to set the VLAN. And in this case, if I press question mark once more, it's saying, what do you want to label this VLAN in? What port do you want to put this into? So in my case, I'm going to say between one and 4,094, I'm going to say 10. When we're down complete there. One last thing that I like to always do, and this is an optional command, but I always think it's a very good idea to do it from a security perspective. And we're not going to talk too much about security here today, but what I also like to do is I always like to put in the, the command switch port mode access. And what this does is it forces this port to become an access port. So it's never going to dynamically try to trunk. And we'll come back and talk about this trunk in a moment. But for now, all I'm saying is I'm forcing this, if you like, PC, PCA, always to be a member of VLAN 10. I don't want it to trunk or allow any other VLANs, just VLAN 10 over this port. So now if I exit and I exit again and I go show VLAN, we can see now that the port now has moved into fast Ethernet. You can see here it's moved into this VLAN 10. Now, this has a big impact with regards to traffic because if I try now to ping between PCA and PCB, will this work? Well, the answer is it should be unsuccessful, so it's gonna fail. And the reason why it's gonna fail is because these are now on isolated networks. This one's in, this port here is in VLAN 10. This port here is in VLAN, for example, um, one still. So if we try that there, um, let's do, let's clear out, just to, to give us a clean slate, I'll go from here over to here, and essentially you can see that now it's failing. And again, we can do this as many times as we, we want, but it's, it will continue to fail. So what we're going to do now is, in order for this to be successful, because we want these two guys to be able to, to ping each other, I'm going to need to do the same on this switch here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up, go over here. I'm going to go to enable mode, conf T. And again, before I do that, let's have a look again. Same thing again with regards to the VLAN database. Okay, this is the, the uh, a VLAN database. Everyone's a member of VLAN 1. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make this guy into, and if I just move that over just a touch, I'm going to check the port. So in this case, I'm going to say, firstly, I'm going to say um, VLAN 10 name, let's say student. And I'm gonna go, go exit, I'm gonna say VLAN 20. 
name faculty. Okay, um, once I've done that, if, if I like, I can go back and check my configuration to just make sure I'm on track. So there's my two VLANs created. Always good to give a relevant name, um, particularly when you need to troubleshoot it. It helps to have relevant names. Um, so now what I need to do is I need to move this guy, Fasty to 11, down into this, basically into this student uh, VLAN. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back in here. I'm going to go Comp-T, I'm going to go into Interface, in this case, Fast Ethernet 0 slash 11, and I'm going to say what? I'm going to say Switch Port Access VLAN 10. And the final command I'm going to say is Switch Port Mode Access. And once I've done that, I've now, if I go back up and show VLAN, I should have moved successfully that machine, PCB in this case, over into for example, into this port. You'll notice here this amber light, by the way, this will stay like that for about 30 seconds. And this is STP, spanning tree protocol in the background, checking there's no loops in the network. We'll talk about spanning tree another day, but for now, just think of it as, as a good thing that it doesn't want to allow loops forming in the network. So frames will go around and around forever. That wouldn't be a good thing. So now I've got both machines on VLAN 10. So now let's try a ping. Well, at the moment you'll think, yeah, this should work. But unfortunately, we're gonna find that this fails. And again, we can keep trying and trying and trying. But what's happening here is basically, there's a problem in this medium, in this, if you like, in this middle link here. And you might say, well, what's the problem? Well, by default, you might remember that it allowed all of the, basically, VLANs you know, it allowed VLAN 1 because VLAN 1 wasn't doing any what's called tagging or adding a little identifier to the to the frame. So what we're actually trying to do at the moment now is when, when our PC starts communicating, our PC, in order to, to send it out over this link, it needs to add what's called a VLAN tag. So the VLAN tag is, it needs to tell, hey, switch to this machine that's coming with sending this traffic is part of a different VLAN. So when switch two receives it, it needs to be able to say, do I send it out to the VLAN 20 or do I send it to VLAN 10? So we actually add a little identifier. And if we just go into simulation mode for a moment, and if we just try and show that happening, we might be able to even look at, you can see this is the ping message going across. And if we just trace the, the steps, We'll notice here that, for example, um, well, it's, it's been successful. If I click on this little envelope, it's showing me the information. So here's the OSI model, the seven layers. It's showing me the inbound, and I can dig into this information. You can see here's just an ordinary Ethernet 2 frame. So again, we have some preamble. We have, for example, the destination address. We have the source address. These are the MAC addresses of my source PC, that's PCA, and going to the destination of PCB. But also, you can see, just to, just to talk through, you can see the IP address information. This is going from 10.3 to 10.4, and you can see this is an ICMP, a ping message, essentially. If, when I press to, to go to the next one, what will happen here is you can see it's, it's literally just disappeared. You can see here, in this case, it's basically, it's, it's just going nowhere. It's like it's not going any further. And you can see another protocol is in its place. It's like it's just disappeared and it's not, it's not progressing across this link. You might say, why is that? Well, these at the moment, you might have noticed I use that switch port mode access command. So this is an access port. This only expects one VLAN and this only expects one VLAN. But you might say, well, isn't this not an access port at the moment? And you're correct, it is. But that only allows access, if you like, port one, VLAN one. So what we need to do is we need to change this link from an access port, this fast Ethernet 01, to what's called a trunk port to allow multiple VLANs. 